just out with Louis giving his morning run and uh, today this video is an update on the van I've had a few emails asking various questions about the van and what I've fitted and why I've fitted and what changes I would make so uh, I've put a video together to answer most of those questions uh, there are a number of videos that I have done with bits and pieces already in about some of the changes I've made to the van but um, hopefully this will ask the que answer the questions What do you reckon Lou? Hey? A number of you have asked about the back of the van and these are actually flat windows fastened onto the van and this is a window as well obviously with an opening in same on this side the sliding door that's a window bonded on and this is also a full window bonded on let's give great reflections don't we we fitted a ladder onto the back the ladder was about 90 pound I think and you just have to drill through the door and fit it in the right area but I've also fitted the ladder so the bike rack actually covers the steps so it's a bit of a preventative thing to stop people climbing up it Rhino roof rack full length roof rack and the roof rack has a roller at the back which makes it easier to put the canoes on it was a bit of a pain fitting that roof rack because it's uh, pre-drilled holes in the roof that you have to bolt through and they're not threaded so I had to take all the roof liner out but if you remember in an old video I was going to change the roof liner anyhow so I did them both at the same time we did have a slight leak at the back when we was up at uh, Tan Hill or the South Lakes I think it was even though I'd put Sikaflex on and some water still managed to get in so I had to take the mounts off at the back and re-seal those and fit them back and since then I've tested it with a hose pipe and it's fine I've also fitted this platform onto the top just something to stand on when you're putting the canoes and kayaks on the roof and these are boards that fasten together and then tie wrap down to the actual roof rack gives you a platform to stand on another compromise that a number of people have talked about is having a roof rack over top of solar panels and I can't really do anything about that because I need the roof rack to put the kayaks and canoeing gear and surfboards on solar panels was already on so I've just got two stripes across there but it still seems to produce enough power to keep the batteries topped up and there is a split charger fitted to the alternator on the engine as well and I had to cut the roof rack, the reason I had to buy a metal roof rack is I had to cut it in two places, there at the front and another one under here and that was to enable those skylights to open thankfully there was only two I had to cut I was going to put some supports on but with this platform it actually supports it enough to hold them in place and still stand on it also on the roof rack I fitted these working lights these are only 30 watt LEDs and they're really good Obviously, you can alter the angle of these but when I was fishing over in Whitby recently this give enough light to actually set up your rod and work from and if you're on a campsite or while camping it gives you enough sight enough light to enable you to light up cooking outside so they've worked really well there's the main boss we obviously fitted the sun visor and that was to break it up slightly the look of the van because it uh, had rather a big forehead before we put that on and I didn't particularly like the lineup of the lights so it covers part of the lights from down here which makes it look better and then we put the big 700 watt light bar on the top because there's a slope on top of the roof rack which is ideal to fit that on it looks good and it lights up the road like daylight and again in that fishing video we did some filming and we used these as filming lights it's really good even changed the aerial had a silver aerial so we put a black aerial on there coming down to the front we fitted this bonnet protector there's a video about the bonnet protector and the sun guide 
and that's worked really well. I was pretty worried that these would keep coming off, but it's uh, been washed a number of times and they've managed to stay on. We changed the black badge for a black one, and it already had the additional LED light bar at the bottom, and I put the number plate on for my T5. In the back is all our storage for all our gear, all the climbing gear and fishing gear and various bits and pieces. These boxes are really good. There's wood burning stoves in there, outdoor barbecues, fishing gear, all sorts of stuff. The uh, camping chairs and a big table fits in there as well. And the back board has got all the gear clipped on there, climbing gear, fishing gear, rucksacks, etc. There's an outdoor shower that fits on the back which is useful for washing yourself down when you've been out in the sea to get the salt off you. And then on the door, somewhere to keep the paddles. So kayak paddles and uh, canoe paddle. And that's an extra light bar that would uh, fit outside if we needed it. There's a power supply at the back here. And it's got lights underneath as well that light up inside so you can find anything. The shower, as well as being used off a cigarette lighter has also got a battery pack with it as well and there's a water tank there to use it with i fitted a hook up system um but i didn't go into the process of fitting one actually into the van as an independent unit i bought one of these camping ones and um, it come with its own cable and i basically fastened this to the back of the wheel arch and from there this unit here is a intelligent battery charger put the light on it'll help intelligent battery charger which enables the battery systems to be charged through the wiring at the back so that works really well and then one of these cables here actually goes along and i fitted a socket to run off it which i'll show you when we go inside fitted these wind deflectors and they're great for when you're driving but also on a night to keep the condensation down we open the window about an inch these stop the wind blowing in but it really stops the condensation problems in the cab there's the main man in the cab we fitted some gopro mounts in various places extra charging unit here so we can charge all the cameras as we're driving along off the alternator another GoPro mount and a new mount for the DJI Osmo Pocket. So they all clip into place and uh, makes life a lot easier. Obviously a mount for the mobile phone. We put a, a laminate kit over the dash, this system here. Um, and that's not bad, it's not the best fit. If you can see that, it's not bad, it's not the best fit, but it makes it look slightly better. I have got the bottom one to change again. They sent me a replacement one because it delaminated slightly. It come with these internal blinds, which are really good, makes life a lot easier. But on the front here, where the GPS is, where the rear view camera and the GPS is, we had to modify that slightly. And I had a big problem getting that mount for the GPS, which is also a rear view um, wireless camera to stay on the windscreen. We was using super glue and various sticky pads, but none of them would hold. So good old Sikaflex on there has held it in place from there onwards. So that is a GPS system and it's also linked to the rear view camera as well by a, a wireless network, which is great. If Louis not sat in the seat, if Joe's with us, but if he is sat in the seat, He's clipped into his harness on the back there, up to the seat. And we put cover on the seat so he doesn't damage the seat. And he has another big bed we can clip him in down here if he's travelling and Joe's with us. And she can warm her feet up on the hot water bottle whip it. Hey Lou, what do you reckon? Hey? The reversing camera works really well. And it's wired in all the time, not off the reversing lights. So if I don't need to use the GPS, or if I just want the GPS on audio, I can still have a rear view camera running all the time. And I can just switch it from one to the other. I'm really pleased with that. It was a nice easy fit as well. I didn't have to drill any holes in the roof of the side of the van to fit that.
the actual drive of the van is really good it's only a two litre engine turbo diesel but um, it seems to have enough power it's managed to get me up all the hills interesting though it doesn't redline on the rev counter till uh, four and a half thousand revs and uh, when you're driving it you tend to forget what gear you're in and you, if you don't use the full red rev range um, you limit the amount of power you're actually getting out of it. It takes a bit of time to get used to driving it and um, it's a manual as well and uh, we have two other cars and they're both automatic so well, if I jump from one car to another I'm usually okay but there is the odd occasion I'll pull up on traffic lights or something and forget to change gear and stall it. It's quite embarrassing. So if I was to change the van again and uh, already thinking about my next van in a few years time I think um, I would go with the same size van but I would go for automatic and the main other thing about I'd change about the van is I'd go for four-wheel drive just so there's uh, less chance of getting stuck in winter or on any campsites or any wild camping sites it's comfortable to drive as a van it's a crafter uh, mid wheelbase high roof and um, just like driving a car really the heating system's good the music system's good the seats are nice and comfy um, it's a nice place to be the windscreen is really big so you get good views so I have no complaints about the actual van itself I've spent a lot of time stopping things rattle and any camper van I've had we've had a number of different vans over the years you always have the camper van rattle and anybody out there who's had a camper van will know you spend a hell of a lot of time finding where that bloody rattle is and solving it but this one hasn't been too bad the sky vents have rattled a bit and we don't actually close the blackout blinds on the sky vents so we've sealed those up because we just don't use them they always rattle quite a bit and a full rattles from the cooker and various bits and pieces like that but they've all been solved so it's quite a quiet drive as well as part of the uh, been a nice easy thing to drive it's not too big either with only being a mid wheelbase um, you can actually fit it into a car parking space only just which helps and it fits into the driveway at home quite nicely being this size so you all, all in all as a van it's great all in all as a camper van it's great the general layout if I was to change anything wouldn't be a great deal I'd probably look for a slightly better finish um, but it's good, it works well. It's remarkably different though from having a T5 or a T6. Just having the extra space and size makes all the difference. We're really pleased with it. Some of the other bits and pieces we've uh, altered in the van are um, just simple holders like that to hold Kindle, mobile phone, glasses just to make it things a little bit more comfortable. Jo likes a cup of tea in the morning so she's got one of these holders here as well for a phone and she can put a cup of tea on there or a glass of water overnight. We did fit this hi-fi system. Um, there was one in it but it wasn't very good so we got this one off the internet. It was about £25 and when it came it was broken but uh, I used to be a TV engineer so I managed to fix it. It would blown a transistor so I managed to upgrade the inside and fix it slightly. <laughs> I didn't realise when I bought it it's actually a karaoke unit as well so it's got bluetooth to music a radio system in it so uh, when we've had a few jars we can have a karaoke session in back of the van we fitted some more lights under here just as reading lights really just to give us some more light um the shelves are really good just for storing things during the day really things can bounce off it did come with this uh like neon crafter sign i think the next thing i would change is this cover in here i don't really like the color of that and i'm thinking of what to do with that so i think that might change eventually more storage up there books and ipads there's another charging socket put there we have another tv dvd player so um we can lay in bed and watch uh, dvds or youtube or tv these are blackout curtains and these are the inside of the windows so these are quite a flush fit and it gives you some extra space on the van. So this is actually a six foot bed. It might not look like it but I'm exactly six foot and this fits in 
perfectly across the van giving this extra bit of space where the van's been cut away and these windows are actually stuck on the outside and it's great to lay in a bed wake up in the morning and open your curtains to a brilliant view particularly if you're wild camping and well out that we have somewhere get some brilliant views we've also fitted up here a charging unit and a separate switch for also this um, volt monitor and that also turns out the work turns on the working lights that are outside I purposely haven't fitted an inverter so I have a 12 volt supply for my uh, laptop MacBook Pro sorry MacBook Air that fits into there so we don't really need an inverter everything can be charged off 12 volts under here is the toilet we've talked about that before they're the speakers for the RFI at the back they sound quite well actually this is the other socket I fitted in just in case we're on hookup and we do want to plug something in everything is switchable by these panels here so apart from that one socket which is live all the time so I can switch the lights on and off without plugging everything else in everything else is switched on and off here and the solar charger and the uh, voltmeter for the split charger comes through that unit as well heater system which is fantastic carbon monoxide and the other TV this was already in and uh, we don't really use this one because um, you know you're cooking or you're in your van we very rarely watch the one in the back but if it's bad weather we can sit there and watch a DVD or something so this one was already in and out the back of there is our Wi-Fi unit and uh, other charging points just the standard sink and cooker fridging units down below swiveling front seat and um, that's about it really we did buy these walkie-talkies that's just the gas alarm setting they did buy these walkie-talkies gadget john told us about these it was about 21 quid and they're absolutely fantastic if there's a couple of you in separate vans and you can talk to each other between them and they're just clipped up there because somewhere to store them cab space is really big plenty of room in the cab space i have thought about putting the shelf up in there but i like the idea that you can stand up in there the other mod we may do is we may put a curtain across here just as a blackout curtain so if we want to park somewhere and don't want to close the front blinds around the windows we can actually just drop that down but all in all we're really pleased with it as i say the layout is like we want it um lou is obviously comfortable with it thinks it's his bed and it takes up most of the bed anyhow but um i don't think we'd have a bathroom because we don't need a shower they just take up too much room and you need lots of water to carry we're happy with the toilet facilities that we have in here so if we do get another van we will probably use a similar sort of layout but as i say same size van same height but it would probably be an automatic and four wheel drive so i hope that answers all your questions from all your emails if you do have any more questions just drop them in the comments below and i'll do my best to answer them uh, i think that covered all the emails I've got and messages I've got uh, but uh, as I say if not just drop a message below and I'll see if I can answer them thanks again bye mm -hmm.